out on the sea Searching for something that really found me I didn't know it, but it drew me to it Soon I was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Levigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile precision handcrafted hybrid center fins, hooked on MFS quality fishing tackle, Seabreeze Boats, Tame the Oceans, and Barlow's Caribbean Cuisine with a Southern Twist. Today, I decided to go out on my own and try fishing with just lures. Saltwater fish love bait, and especially live bait. But I'm going to challenge myself and see what I can fool just jigging. One of the lures I'm going to be using is an MFS Baits Jigging Spoon. The other is casting a gotcha. It's so nice to be out here on the ocean. You know, I don't see another boat out here. Probably has to do because it's a little bit rough, but I just love the fresh air. And being out in the ocean is a great way to watch the sunset. We were out here last night and it was so dynamic. You know, we're out here just using, oh, nice grunt, using artificials. Is he gonna stay on? Look at, that's a good eating size fish right there. So I decided tonight not to use any bait, just to use vertical jigging presentations. Isn't that a beautiful grunt? You can see it's hooked really lightly. These fish are lucky today. It's Sunday for them because we don't have a cooler in the boat. I could put them in the live well, but we've got so many fish back home to eat that all these guys are gonna be released. Look at those beautiful lines, blue lines on their head. He's looking right at you. He's saying, I'm a star. You gotta watch these spines. You can see I've got my hand underneath. And these guys have teeth. Look, see those teeth? And here, I'm gonna hold the spoon because I don't think he's gonna fall down. I'm gonna get my pliers just to show you how big their mouths are. So they've got big yaps. I'm gonna use a little hook. Look how big. Think he can open to grab some pretty major food? No problem. So that size, you know, a couple of fish. You got a nice meal from them. Grunts are so plentiful in the warm oceans. Gorgeous fish. You know, in salt water, we're not as gentle as fresh water. A lot of times we just throw them in so that when they hit the water, they take off. I'm using a blind fish. He's lost its eyes. I've caught so many fish on it. You know, this is my good buddy, Scott Martin, that makes these. He's got the MFS Lure Company, and it's such a simple jig. So this is a real natural color, so it's not really bright, flashy, and it's supposed to resemble something that's near the bottom. Now, what I've done is I put on a double X hook. This red hook is really strong. And I've got a wire leader on here because sometimes you get fish with teeth down here. We might get a little bit later. So what I'm trying to do is just fish vertically and keep it near the bottom. Now for this jigging action, you know, I'm just using a very simple, this is a bare center pin reel. It's the same kind of reel that we use up north for salmon fishing and also for steelheading. Uh, I've caught fish close to 100 pounds on it. It's a great reel. Um, it's very simple to use. Just by turning the switch, the line comes off or I can hold a line like this. So you deliver your line to the bottom really fast. So you can see the way it's falling down. And because we've got a lot of wind, I'm kicking the motor in and out of gear. So right now we're free drifting. So I'm just gonna put it in reverse. We're in about uh, 50, 60 feet of water. And let me tell you, the wind is brisk. So you can probably see it from the motion of the boat. Once it reaches the bottom, I just uh, lock the mechanism. I put it into the drag mode. So I've got a drag right now. You can hear the clicker. Nice and noisy, lets you know that the reel's working. Maybe I'll take the clicker off because we're, we're uh, getting these smaller fish. If I get a bigger fish on, I'll have the drag on. The other thing I like about the bare reel is that my hand, when I have it on free spool like I do now, is the actual drag. So if I get a big fish on, I can clamp that drag down to up to 25 pounds, which is a good drag for offshore fishing. Or I just palm it, just another fish. See, those hooks are small. So they gotta grab it in their mouth. And you saw that grunt, even though he had a big mouth, that just had one hook on the tip. That's because that spoon is dropping real quick. It's not like fishing bait on the bottom. 
One fun fish to catch that is small but has lots of energy is the blue runner. These guys have a big appetite. The funny thing is, other fish love to eat them too. Boy, the wind just got stronger. You know, normally in the evening, the wind subsides, but it's actually gusting even stronger. What I've done is uh, I've uh, switched to a rod to fish on the bottom and to cast. So I've got that IRT reel on there, and uh, I'm just working a jigging lure near the bottom. And this guy's thrashing. He might be a small mackerel. Because, you know, the fish are mixed in together. He's not taking any drag, so it can't be too big. I just hear him thrashing. We're actually just cutting along with this boat in the wind. It's a good way to save on fuel. OK, do I see him? Oh, you know what? It's a, a pretty big blue runner. Look it. That's funny. I thought I had a mackerel on. So these guys are really good bait for some of the larger predator fish. You know, like the amberjacks love them. The kingfish love them. They're a perfect fish for them to feed on. See how brilliant he is. You've got to be careful because you see down here, if he doesn't fall off the hook, right here near the anus, he's got those two little sharp things, extremely sharp. You've got to really be really careful. I'm surprised a bigger fish didn't grab this guy while I was fighting him because that happens quite a bit. So predators like barracuda and especially cobia. This spring we've had a lot of cobia take our fish when we've been fighting even larger fish like mackerel, even king mackerel. This guy's going to go back. Uh, you can tell how windy it is. I'm going to drop this guy over the side. But look at the waves here, the rollers. This guy's going to go in. He's going to take off in a second. See, look at these. We're, we're talking about, uh, we've got three to four foot waves. We're going to go back up there. We're going to use the wind to our advantage, right? Why fight the wind? When you can use it, we're gonna be kind of like a sailboat, and we're gonna use these jigs and get down to different depths. Winds have picked up, boat control is getting harder to vertical jig, so it's off in search of any feeding activity on the surface. Now this is what we're talking about. You see the birds that are there? You hear of people, especially in saltwater fishing, talking about watching for birds. You can see those turns. You can actually see the, the uh, mackerel coming up on the surface taking the bait. So the birds are actually using the mackerel to know where the bait fish are. Look, so they're both feeding together. That's kind of a neat sight. Looks like they're very picky and feeding on small silver bait fish. Good thing I customized one of the MFS baits with foil to make it really flashy. This is kind of nice. We have one boat, one boat over there. They're both just uh, bottom fishing, I think. And it's nice when you find these fish that are suspended that you can make these long casts you know, with the artificials. Loosen the drag off a little bit. This isn't a big fish, but I've gone to a lighter rod. And this is another IRT reel. You know what? This is a nice eating size Spanish mackerel. So I'm going to see if I can lift him right in the boat, see if he doesn't fall off. Uh, I've got a lighter leader on here. Oh, got him. You know, if you're coming down south, like wherever there's warm oceans, these guys are very plentiful. And I hooked them just nicely. You can see he's got one hook. You know, now look look at that spoon. That's that spoon with that foil finish. Like I say, it doesn't look like much. And you don't have to even really work it. Just cast it out really far. This one is a three quarter ounce. And just retrieve it with a little bit of a jerk every once in a while. So I know the bigger ones work really well for some of the larger jacks, you know, up to five, six ounces. But this three quarter ounce one, remember it's an MFS lure. They're great lures to use in salt water. Let me get this guy up. Look, that's a meal for one person. Those beautiful spots. It's going to go in the cooler. Sometimes it's tough to keep up to the birds and the fish exploding on the surface. Seems like if I move down to where I spot them, when I get there, both are back where I came from. Go figure. The term sea legs really applies to today because we're rocking and rolling out here, but that's OK. I mean, I love getting these fish on artificials. This isn't a big mackerel. But you know what? There's so much fun when you get into school of them because you'll see them break on the surface. And a lot of times, if you lower your jig down, you'll get them anywhere in between the surface and the bottom. Let's see if I can flip this guy in. Actually, I'm going to shake him off right off the side of the boat because he's a small guy. Look it. I love those spots on them. They're such a great predator fish, you know, for hitting those bait fish and lures. You can see here, I don't want to get too close because we're going to be releasing it there. It's only on, hooked on by one hook. Look at this, perfect release. There he goes. Look at how short this leader is. You know, I've only got about, a, I'm going to say a 10-inch leader. 
And look at how banged up this lure is from getting all those fish. This particular leader is that um, titanium. So it, it's uh, really springy. But a lot of times when we're casting, especially when you get excited in these windy conditions, the lure will actually get caught up into the hooks like this, and that just destroys your presentation. So I find when you're using these, even though they just have a straight action going across the water, it's really important that it's not tangled before you cast. Finally, I get into some nice Spanish mackerel action. They're not big, but they hit well and are fun to catch. Actually, they're a perfect eating size. One mackerel is a meal for one person. Yeah! Man, my wrist is getting a workout. You know, I learned, oh boy, 40 years ago, that the birds are so important, whether they're those big frigate birds that are high flyers or the smaller terns. A lot of times they'll tell you what kind of bait fish they want to eat, and they're looking for the game fish underneath to bring that bait up to the top. So let's see if this is, this is probably another Spanish. I can see some nice bright silver. Look at nice fish. I love how flashy they are. But you know when they're chasing those bait fish and they're vertical, they probably look almost invisible when they come up on them. So we can see them now because we're fighting them. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can lift this guy in the boat. He's got my lure all wrapped up. Now these aren't big Spanishes, but you know for eating, I think they're some of the best. Um, boy, I got a bit of an issue here because he's lassoed. Let me just see here. I'm gonna try holding him over the side. There's one hook out and he's got the other one in his yap. I'm just bracing it against the side of the boat. It's nice when you can stay on these fish too that they don't uh, go back down because a lot of times they appear on the surface and as soon as their food supply is gone, they're gone. I'm doing well, aren't I? I'm going from one hook to the other. This time I should be able to do it. I can just shake it off and he should fall in. Come on, there he goes. Little scrapper. Look at how brilliant. Now that the seas are calming down a bit, you can appreciate how bright these fish are. Beautiful. This guy's gonna be a quick release. Come here. Just gotta watch those hooks. Oh good, he's almost off. Even this little guy. Can you see all those sharp teeth? Man, they're loaded. Okay, I'm gonna shake them off. Perfect, and we've got fish busting around the boat. Bottom fishing is fun, drifting, trolling with bait for big fish, but there's just something about, you know, chasing the fish when you see them on the surface or when you see a school down below to work them right off the bottom. You know, when you're casting lures like this and jigging on the bottom, a spinning reel is ideal, but I also use that bear. This IRT has a lot of line capacity, so a lot of times you'll get a smaller fish on and then you'll get a big fish grab it, like this Spanish mackerel here. It's probably about, uh, I'm guessing, a pound and a half. So they tend to travel in schools together. You know, they are so much fun. I watch people when these things go inshore and they're around piers and stuff. So many people fish for them and use uh, live bait and also, uh, oh, sharp teeth there, gotta be careful. Lures, there it goes. Sometimes when you get into a school of mackerel, there are large predators like Kobe and King mackerel that love to feed on them. Just in case, I've got a wire leader on and I'm always ready for something bigger to latch on. I just had a screamer hit. You know, it's funny, you'll be getting some of those smaller mackerel or some of the blue runners, and even jigging for some of the smaller bottom fish, like the grunts, and then all of a sudden, just your drag screams. This rod is so nice for fighting these fish on lighter gear. This particular one was made by Dante up in uh, New Jersey when we were filming in New York with uh, Captain Frank. He's kind of busy now to build rods, but I wish he would still keep building them because they're so great. You can see how uh, narrow the grip is, thin, and how long the butt is. It's perfect for fighting fish, for like anchoring to yourself, and I feel everything through the handle. It almost feels like the rod's gonna break, but this is a powerful rod. 
and it's one piece. So I use two piece and one piece rods, and of course matched with that IRT reel and the Suffix 832 braid. You can cast far, you just gotta be patient. Hopefully the fish is hooked okay. You know, when you're using these uh, hard lures made out of metal, a lot of times the fish are just tagged on the edge of the mouth and they'll come off. But uh, I'm hoping that this guy's gonna stay on so at least we can get a look at it. Man, what a run. That was about uh, 50 to 100 yards. Oh, I see it. It's silver right on top. I got a feeling it's a big king mackerel. Wow. Look at that fish on light gear. Trying to get it up. Oh, man, no wonder it made so many big runs. So he was probably in here feeding on those Spanish. And uh, he saw my lure. It was nice, bright, and silver. and just nailed it. So I got to take it easy. The, I don't know how well he's hooked. Yeah, that is a good sized fish. Look at, on light gear, big head shakes. I'm on. Okay, see if I can get him by the tail. Okay. Oh, what a fight. I gotta just brace myself here. Look at, that is a nice king. You can see that lure right in the side of his mouth. I'm trying to see if he's gonna settle down a little bit because the last thing I need is a fish thrashing around. So I'm gonna put him down. He might thrash a little bit. You know what, he was so good. He had the one hook on the one side and the one treble. And what I do is, with these lures, you don't have to really upgrade the hooks, but on the MFS, I go to like a double X or triple X. So even now, I gotta check to make sure that those hooks are uh, normal, that they're not bent out. And the leader seems to be in good shape, maybe just a little bit kinked. So what I'm doing, I'm talking so that that fish just calms down, because the last thing I wanted is him jumping around. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Man, did he fight hard. Look at Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. Spanish mackerel are one of the most plentiful mackerel anywhere in the Gulf. And they're easy to catch, they come in in big schools, and they're great eating. The first thing that I do is take the Spanish mackerel and I cut a fillet off each side. Now, Spanish mackerel don't really have scales, they just have a really thin, shiny skin. Don't worry about the skin. I take each fillet, flip it over skin side down, and I very gently run the tip of my knife down the ladder line where the T-bones are. I make that incision and then I slide my knife gently underneath those T-bones and I remove the whole strip of bones out. That way my fillet is clean. I do that to the other side and to the rest of my fish and they're ready to prepare for the barbecue. I take each fillet and place them flesh side up and I put a mixture of roasted garlic and green pepper, salt and pepper on top of the flesh side. While I'm doing that, the barbecue preheats at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I gently coat the grill mat with butter, just for flavor, not too much. I take each piece of mackerel and gently place them skin side down on the grill mat and let them cook for about 10 minutes at 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. After 10 minutes, I check the fillets. They should be cooking nicely from the outside in. After 15 minutes, I turn the fillets gently and allow them to cook for another 15 minutes. These fish aren't very thick, but they take a while to cook just to perfection. I remove the fillets, place them on a platter, and they're ready to devour. Barbara, I'm so blessed to have you as my wife. You're such a patient person. Does it look like I'm gonna ask you to marry me? <laughs> Wait a second, we've been married 17 years. Yes, yeah, 17. Yeah, thanks for watching the dogs while I was out fishing. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna serve you first. This is the, uh, one of our favorite. It's the Spanish mackerel that was freshly caught. The action was great out there. We're gonna start with uh, these two pieces. Thanks for doing all the garnishes, Barb, and You're the welcome. desserts and everything else that you've got in there. Oh, thank you. So, are you serious that you didn't fish when you were younger? You told me the story that your brothers went fishing and they left you on shore? When I was about three. Wow, do you remember where, where they went? What lake you were on? I mean, three's a long time I ago. I just know my brother got a sturgeon. But this, I mean, can you eat any healthier? Look at what we've got here. Anybody? Organic. Yeah. Organic fish. So we got kale, mm -hmm. 
We got some nice lemon that we can squeeze on top. What a nice meal. The one thing that I like about Spanish mackerel, when you fillet it, it's so easy to clean because you can take the whole side off. And if you're careful, you can leave the rib cage on the fish. And then all you have to do is take those T-bones that go down the middle out. So look at, I actually had a groove there with my knife, but it's all filled in when, it, when it's cooked. So it actually looks like the entire fillet. I can't get over how nice and flaky the fish is. Now I cooked it at 250, between 200 and 250 Fahrenheit on the grill mat that you got me. So it, that was very sweet of you. All I did was just take the butter and just very gently smear it, almost like I was painting it. So it's not like I, I poured butter on there. So I just wanted to get a little bit of flavor on the skin side. And look at what how that grill mat protects the fish. If I turn this piece over, look, you can still see all the markings of that Spanish mackerel, the spots and everything. Yes. And the skin is like tissue paper. So that's why I don't mind eating it. Like there's no scales, literally. Mm -hmm. But I, I like how moist it is. If it's done at 250 with that grill mat, I think what happens, the grill mat keeps any flames or direct heat off the fish. So the fish cooks so slow. And as it cooks, the natural juices, the water that's coming off the fish, blends with all these seasonings. So the seasoning that I used, it's a little bit mix of paprika, which is the red. Mm -hmm. There's some roasted garlic. Yes. There's some roasted pepper. And then there's a, that special seasoning that Peter brought down that really gives it a nice flavor. I think it's a little bit hot. Can you taste it? Yes, Just a I little can bit. taste the hot. So I have an idea. Mm -hmm. I think after we have a dessert, by the way, cheers, we should watch a movie. I haven't watched a movie for a while. Are you up to it? Roman so. Romance or thriller? Thriller. Thriller with a love story. Okay, done deal. Okay, perfect. One day I wandered out on the sea Searching for something that really found me I didn't know it, but it drew me to it Soon I was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Lubignan. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch, it's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile precision handcrafted hybrid center fins, hooked on MFS quality fishing tackle, Seabreeze Boats, Tame the Oceans, and Farlow's Caribbean Cuisine with a Southern Twist.